All right, welcome back. Uh, I trust you had a good three-day weekend. How many slept in really late on on Monday yesterday? How many How many got a lot of stuff done yesterday? It was kind of a, I got a lot of projects to catch up on, so I'm going to get it done. All right. How many did absolutely no schoolwork yesterday at all? All right, so in other words, you're going to be suffering. Tomorrow. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at your homework here in just a moment. Page 23. In your supplements, if you would, you did number 16 to 22 on the page. Um, but recently, we've been, uh, by the way, one of the things I mentioned in the homework was to study over pages 15 to 22. So let's review some of the stuff that was on those pages. Uh, we talked about a plan to spend money wisely. And Kirsten, you were out, but you watched some of the videos. Let me just kind of ascertain what you know. For the rest of you, good posture and paying attention as well, even though I'm talking primarily to Kirsten. Here, Michael, we do hope you get better. We are praying for you. Um, Kirsten, a plan to spend money wisely is called a budget. budget. Good. And when we budget, we don't need to budget for our gross income, but rather for our net income, our net pay. We have another term for net pay that we used in conjunction with the budget because that's the money we actually take home. That's the money we get to choose how we want to spend it. Do you remember what that other term was? No, no, no. Disposable income. Disposable income. Class, what's another name for the net pay? Disposable income. Disposable income. Because we get to dispose of or spend that money as we see fit. Now, like we did say as Christians, uh, Kirsten, we know that there's the obligation to tithe at least how much? Um, uh, it's actually a percentage. It's not an amount. 18%. Ooh, now the Lord would take 18%. Don't get me wrong, Bryson. 10%, right? The Bible commands 10%. Now, the Bible, how many, how many of you were at the missions conference services? How many of you, when he talked about giving over and above the tithe, and I think he even used the uh, the verse about, would you rob God? Anyone think, remember back? He's like, hey, Mr. Dasky mentioned that in math class. Yeah, we were in cahoots. We had, just kidding. We didn't actually talk about that. But I, was, I thought about math class as well when he was saying that. Uh, but, of course, giving over and above the tithe, certainly, uh, to missions or other causes, it is good as well. But the Bible at least commands 10% of the tithe. And then we also said savings. There's a certain percent that we ought to try to put into savings. All right? 5%. 5%. So 10% tithe, 5% savings. That leaves 85% of the disposable income for you to spend as you need to. There was another number, by the way, that wasn't actually in the blur, but it was mentioned later. Rent. If you want to rent a condo, townhouse, apartment, rent a home, there's a percent that the uh, renting company, the leasing company, sets as their figure. If you, They won't let you spend more than this percent on housing. What's that percent? Do you remember, Jalen? I want to say like 20. It's higher than that. 30. 30. So and when you try to rent, you got to know, okay, this is how much I make. They won't let you pay more than 30% of your income on uh, the rent. Otherwise, they know you're going to end up not paying the rent. They're going to have to evict you. It's a big, messy process. They don't want to deal with it. So, you know, you can't rent a $1,000 a month apartment if you're only pulling in $2,000 a month, right? That's 50% of your income. They're not going to do that, okay? There's no way you're going to be able to afford that. So they just they would not allow you to. Um, you don't have to actually know that number, though. Uh, so we talked about the budget, and we said that we, we track the budget, we find percentages, right? We find the part to the whole, and we'll practice a little bit with that here in just a moment. Uh, and then we went on to um, something called buying on time. We had a couple different names for it. What's one of the names for buying on time? Where instead of just paying for something, you're like, yeah, I can't afford that refrigerator, but if Lowe's is willing to give me like a payment plan, I'll pay them a certain amount every month. Or I can't afford to buy a house outright. I don't have $150,000, but I can afford to make monthly payments. What's buying on time called? What's one of the names for it, Elaine? Installment buying. Installment buying or an installment plan. An installment loan would be another way to put it. What's another name for the type of loan that you would use where you pay the same amount every month um, and uh, over time you end up paying off the loan? Ben, do you remember? Down payment. Well, there is a down payment involved, which we're going to get to in just a moment. Luciana, do you remember? An amortized. An amortized. Now that I think about it, I have a flashback. I think I called on you Friday, and you had fun pronouncing that. Amortized loan is another name for it, where you're going to pay the same amount every single month. And um, <laughs> now with an amortized loan, we talked about a down payment. What was that, Ben? Come back to you. What was the down payment? For instance, let's just say you're going to buy a $20,000 used car, and you can't pay $20,000, what's a down payment? You pay it up front. 
So you pay a little bit up front. Like for instance, maybe you can pay, well, we can't give you 20,000, but I can give you 3,000, for instance. Well, that amount is the down payment, which means how much do you amortize class if you pay $3,000 down? $20,000 car, $3,000 down, how much are you amortizing? 17,000, right? You amortize whatever you don't have actually paid, and that's what you would pay interest on. And every month you pay off the interest, and the interest gets smaller and smaller and smaller every month. To what by the end, the last payment virtually has no interest in it. It's pretty much all the principal or the balance of the loan. Um, and then last time, we talked about the government. Not just taking money when you earn it. They've already done that. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Um, but you remember the deductions from your paycheck, right? And uh, you, uh, you get paid the gross pay, but no, you don't because the government, right? Well, after that, the government takes more money. And they take money based on what you spend. When you buy something, the government takes a portion of that. They get a little bit extra from that. What do we call a percentage of sales that the government takes? Corey? When you purchase something, a percent of the sale is what the government takes. What do we call that? Bryson? Sales tax. Sales tax. What is it, Corey? Sales tax. Sales tax. Just a percentage of the sale that the government wants as well. Now, that's on top of the sale. So it's not that they get a piece of the sale. You pay for the purchase, plus you pay a little extra, right? Um, how many have felt that before? You've gone to the store. You know what I'm talking about. You've had to pay sales tax. Now, the, the, gover the federal government, the US of A, Uncle Sam, he don't charge sales tax. Who charges sales tax? The state. The state? The county. the county. And in some cases, the city. Now, the city doesn't always charge sales tax, uh, but counties <laughs> and states do. And so you pay tax on that. Oftentimes, um, certain items are either not taxed or are taxed less. What kind of items are taxed less or sometimes not at all by certain states and counties? Mm -hmm. And, and, and Kirsten's like, really? There are things that aren't taxed? Can you believe it? Food, Food groceries, right? Now, essential groceries. For instance, um, um, not that we would be interested in buying this, but alcohol is always taxed, okay? Because they don't consider that a necessity, right? And besides, the government's like, hey, if you're going to have an addiction problem, we're going to capitalize on it. So they're going to collect taxes. This is, by the way, one of the reasons why states wanted to legalize marijuana. Because as long as it's legal, they can tax it. No, it's not. If it's not legal, then you're not buying it officially through dealers. You're buying it underhanded, black market type stuff where you're not paying any taxes. They can't cash in on it. So it's greed, really, that drives the, the legalization of marijuana. They know it hurts people. They know it causes addiction. They know it's bad for the community. They know it's bad for people. But they want to make a little money off it, so they legalize it. Um, anyway. It also gets down the number of people they have to throw in jail for dealing in marijuana. And they're like, yeah, our jails are full. Uh, but anyway, you know what the real answer there is, right? It's get the gospel to people, right? Why are people doing drugs? This was mentioned actually specifically um, uh, on Sunday in our missions conference service. Why do people turn to addiction? Why do people turn to drinking and drugs and, and things like that? They're, they're searching, right? They need answers. They have no hope. They have no joy. They have no peace. Maybe this drug will give me peace because I won't have to think about my problems or I'll be on a little bit of a high or I'll drink my problems away. Why do the people do that? They don't have Christ, right? That's why the Bible says we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be filled with wine. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit, right? Let the Holy Spirit of God fill you with his joy and his peace. Uh, but I digress. Uh, so sales tax, right? And so some items are taxed at different rates. And if you look on page 22, it mentions, you know, Columbus, Georgia, since most of you live there, the tax rates. A lot of you live in Phoenix City, mentions tax rates there. If you're watching in other states, you know, look up your own tax rates just for interest's sake. Uh, but no, it works much the same way. Page 23 now. The first part of the homework had nothing whatsoever to do with money. It was just a review of numerical evaluation. Number 16, you're supposed to evaluate 4V minus 8 if V is 2. What did you get for your answer, Elaine? I got 0. 0 is correct. Number 17, negative 5V plus X if V is 3 and X is 2. What did you get, Joel? Negative 13. Negative 13. Number 18, W squared negative 6Z if W is negative 4 and Z is 5. Kirsten, you did this. What did you get? Negative 38. It's not negative 38. Then number 18? 24. Mm, it's not 24. Ooh, Griffin. 
Mine's wrong. <laughs> Yours is wrong too, Jalen. <laughs> negative 14. We're going to take a look at that in just a minute. I got a 14. Uh, it should be negative, negative 14. We'll look at it. Number 19. Let's go back to uh, Kirsten. 3AB plus B cubed if A is 2 and B is negative 2. Negative 2. Neg Ooh, really close. Really close. Then? Negative 6. Ooh, Griffin. 19. Oh. I mean, Corey? like, are you saying question 19? Oh, question 19, yes. Question 19, what'd you get? I got four. That's no, still wrong. What'd yeah. you say? <laughs> Negative 20 is correct. Man, we get to, we need to go over this stuff. Number 20, third tries the charm, Kirsten. Q to the fifth, positive 12R, negative 5, QR. If Q is 1 and R is 8, Kirsten. 141. Oh, dear. 55. Oh. 51. Oh, the pain, Luciana. I have 55. Oh, Elaine. 61. This was harder than I realized, Joel. 57. It's negative 27. Uh, number 21 was a huge number, though. So if you got a really big number for 21, then you're correct. Okay, Griffin, take a shot at number 21. 513. Oh, you're close, actually, but it's not 513. 601. It's not quite that big. You're in between these two answers. Luciana? 561. Oh, you're Liz Dexic at the end. 561. 561. There we go. Bam. Okay, so uh, number 16, how many good on 16, 17 at least? We don't need to go over those. Okay, we got 0 for 16, negative 13 for 17. Does anyone need to see one of those worked? No. Okay, so starting with 18, we ran into trouble. Remember, when you evaluate, I said plug in the numbers, putting them in parentheses. Put them in parentheses. So if W is negative 4, then write negative 4 squared like this. And then negative 6, Z, in for Z, we put 5. Now, here's the key, right here. When we square something, what does that mean, class? Times, so times so itself. Five. So this means negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 6 times 5. Okay, what is negative 4 times negative 4, class? 16. Positive 16. Because when the signs are the same, it's an automatic positive. Right here, the signs are different. So negative 6 times positive 5, class. Negative 30. Negative 30. This is a positive 16 and negative 30. Signs are different. Subtract. Keep the sign of the greater absolute value. Does that make sense now? Look at number 19. It says 3AB. But instead of A, class, we write? 2. And instead of B, we write? Negative 2. And then it says plus B cubed. Well, instead of B, we write? Negative 2. Negative 2. All right, let's start right here by multiplying these three things together. 3 times 2 times negative 2. First thing I see is how many negatives, class? One. 1. And if there's one negative, that's odd, so our answer is? Negative. negative. And then 3 times 2 times 2 is? 12. So that's a negative 12. Then we come over here. And negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Right? How many negatives, class? Three. Three. That's odd, so my answer is going to be? Negative. Negative, and 2 times 2 times 2 is? Eight. 8. So I've got a negative 12 plus a negative 8. Well, that gives us? Negative 20. Because we add and keep the signs. Does that make sense now that we've seen that one worked out? All right, look at the next one, number 20. This one had the fifth power, but it's 1 to the fifth plus 12 times 8 minus 5 times 1 times 8. All right? Well, what is 1 to the fifth, class? 1. 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. one. If you're adding it, it'd be 5, but we're not adding, we're multiplying. And then, of course, 12 times 8? Um, 96. 96. And then right here, we're going to subtract 5 times 1 times 8, which is? 40. 40. So I'm going to put these two together first. 1 to 96 gives? 97. And then we subtract the 40, and we get? 57. 37. Oh, you know what? This is negative. This is positive 57. All right. So when I did this, I realized I plugged in the 1 for the R. Where it said 12R, I wrote 12 times 1 right there. I'm like, how did I get that so wrong? That would be it. Okay, so that is not negative 27. So if you were screaming at your computer just now saying, no, I know it's positive 57. You are correct. It is positive 57. All right, there we go. Um, how many have the 57? All right, you, were, you did better than I did on that one because you plugged in the right number for your R. R was 8, not 1. But let's take a look at number 21. And let's see how we did on that one. We have a 10. It says A squared. Of course, A class is 3. three. So that's a 3 squared. Then K is 6. And this is negative A or negative 3 plus, and then 4K means 4 times 6. All right, we've got to start here. Remember, exponent first. 
Nine. Not multiply first, exponent first. Three squared plus is? Nine. nine. So it's 10 times nine times six minus three plus four times six. Okay, let's start with this. What is nine times six? 54. 54 times 10? 540. 540. There's our big number. Then minus three just means minus three or negative three. And then four times six is? 24. 24. Again, I'm going to add these two big numbers first. 540 and 24. 564. 564. Then minus the three gives the? 561. And there's our answer there. Okay, questions on the evaluation. Questions on evaluation. All right, now, now that we know that 20 was actually 57, not negative 27, was anyone perfect on 16 to 21? You did better than I did. Mm. Hey, Jalen, great job. How many just missed one like I did? Anyone just missed one like I did? Anyone just missed two? Mm. All right, any last questions on those? Oh, it was kind of fluttering that way there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at number 22, and I would ask Corey to read it, but Corey has lost his voice. So we're going to have uh, Bryson read it on his behalf. Corey's mom. Twenty gallons? I mean, two, two gallons. Okay, I was about to say maybe it misprinted or something. Okay, two gallons of milk. Hey, keep going. Uh, one bag of shredded cheese for four dollars. One bag of toilet paper for four dollars. Three cans of green beans for eight eighty-five cents each. One pack of paper to paper towels for seven dollars, and one bottle of vitamin C for uh, tablets for for six dollars. Find the total spent of the groceries. Find the total. Find the total percent of each item. Sale tax of on groceries was five dollars or five percent. Five. Find the food tax. Sale tax on items or other items for nine percent. Find the additional tax and and what was her total. All right, so most of this is straightforward, right? The cheese, the toilet paper, the paper towels, the vitamin C towels, that was all easy, right? Because it was just one. But there were two things we had to do a little bit of extra math on, right? If there were two gallons of milk for two seventy-five each, the first thing we had to do is figure out how much is that for the milk? How much was it for the milk, Luciana? So I kind of wrote that off to the side next to the milk. I wrote five fifty, And then I came down to the green beans and... Um, Three cans of green beans for 85 cents each. How much is that for the green beans? Uh, Griffin? Um, $2.55. So I wrote that not next to the green beans, $2.55. Okay, so I kind of got those off to the side. Now, the milk and the green beans class, what category does that fall under? Food. Food, right? Is there any other food besides milk and green beans? Cheese. Uh, the cheese. cheese, okay. So that's also food. Is there any other food? No. no, that's the food. So the first thing I did was I found out how much total on food. We got five fifty for the milk. We got four dollars for the cheese. We got two fifty five for the green beans. How much is it for the food, Kirsten? You got your calculator ready? Yeah, go ahead and type those numbers in. I know you weren't here, but I want you to do this one with me here. The rest of you checking your work. How much did she spend on food? She adds those numbers up. For the green beans, did you say two fifty five? Two fifty five is what Griffin told us. Three cans times eighty five cents each. $8.05? Okay, don't forget the shredded cheese was four bucks also. The cheese was also food. So add the four bucks in there. $12.05? All right, how many had $12.05 for the food? That's what we should have in the first blank. $12.05 for the food. All right, now, then we gotta find all the other items. How much did she spend? So what, we'll tell you what, cross out the food now that we've already accounted for it. Go through and cross out the food, the milk, the cheese, the green beans. The only things left are the toilet paper, paper towels, and vitamin C tablets, because she wants to stay healthy, doesn't want to get sick like Michael. And, uh, well, and Luciana, and Kirsten, and <laughs> Bryson. Bryson's sick. Oh, that's right. Bryson was out Friday as well. Yeah. So, um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's been a three-day weekend, man. I uh, <laughs> didn't mean to forget about you there. Um, but she didn't want him to get sick, so she's getting the vitamin C tablets. We add those together. How much, Kirsten, does she spend on non-food items? <coughs> Don't die. Look at the look at the list. Find stuff that ain't food and add it up. So what on that list ain't food? Do you need some water? You have water. $25. How many found $25 for non-food? Okay, now. There's two different categories of tax in Columbus, Georgia. 
If you buy food, you pay 5% tax. How do I find 5% tax? What do you think, Kirsten? Times 0.5 or 0.05? Times 0.05. So take the food to find the grocery tax or the food tax. Take the food, 1205 times 0.05. Kirsten, how much was the food tax? Um, 6 cents. Point six, you mean? Yeah, 0.6. Well, point, point. that's how much? 60 cents, right? Not $60, 60 cents. All right, so 60 cents for food. That's not too bad. All right, now, the non-food is 9% tax. So what do I do to find the non-food tax? Times 0 0.09. What times 0 0.09? Five. Or... What do we multiply by 0 0.09? What, how much did she spend on non-food? Oh, I need that. How much was spent on non-food kids? 25 bucks. That's what we multiply by 0.09. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, you know you weren't here on Friday to get this. Bryson, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, track in with what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. All right. So how much was the non-food tax, Bryson? Did you multiply it out? Yeah. Use your calculator. <laughs> 25 times 0.09. You mean 2.25? Yeah, $2.25. How many of $2.25 for the non-food tax? All right, so to find her total, what do we gotta do, class? Add it all up. Add it all together, right? Add up the food, the non-food, the food tax, the non-food tax, just add it all together. How much did she spend at the grocery store? Now, she should have only spent $37.05 if it weren't for the government. But again, we like having a police force, we like having firemen, we like having paved roads. That's where a lot of these things come from is the tax. So we, we you know, it's necessary, I suppose. What you got, Kirsten? $39.87. I, you're really close. I'm not sure here, you're just that little tiny bit off. Uh, Luciana? $39.66. I'm, I'm really, did you check all your other numbers? Were all your other numbers correct? Griffin? $39.90. $39.90 should have been our answer. So double check it. $39.90. How many have $39.90 for your answer? Okay, questions on this. Questions on this. All right, turn over if you would to page 31 now. Flip ahead to page 31 in your textbooks. We're going we're to skip over a little bit here. 31 in your textbooks. We're going to skip over some pages here. Do a little bit more practice with uh, some of these things. Look at problem number eight there at the top of page 31. Uh, just hold on for now. Page 31, look at problem number eight and read number eight for us, if you would, Joel. Haley wants to buy her gun in a few months for her little brother's birthday. She has $15 on her gun. Haley wants to buy her gun in a few months for her little brother's birthday. She has $15 already, but the Nerf gun costs $17.99 plus tax. But the tax sales rate is 9.25. Percent. Percent. How much will she need to save up in order to buy the Nerf gun? Well, the first thing we got to do is figure out how much the Nerf gun costs, right? Well, it tells us how much the Nerf gun costs. Almost. It tells us the gun costs, class. $17.99. But plus tax. Add your seats. Find the tax. Add your seats. And you need calculators out, as always. You need calculators out. Anybody else need a calculator? They should take care of the four class. But again, we have a three-day weekend and forget about that routine. All right, how much is the tax? Well, what do I do to find the tax, Ben? Uh, turn it into a decimal. Which would be what? Uh, point, point. Point zero nine two five. There we go, point zero nine two five, and we multiply that by what? Seventeen. Seventeen ninety nine. And how much is the tax then, um, Bryson? Uh, did you type in what we just said? Yeah. yeah so it's not wrong. Dollar uh, sixty six. Now the decimal keeps going, of course, but we rounded two decimal places, so a dollar sixty six. How many found dollar sixty six tax? Mm -hmm. Now that's in addition to that's the government's share. Government gets a dollar sixty six. The various governments, I should say. So Haley has to pay buck sixty six plus the seventeen ninety nine. So now add that together. How much does the Nerf gun actually cost Haley? Twenty 
she wants to go to the store and buy it, then how much does Haley actually have to pay for Nerf gun? 1965. 1965. How many of the 1965? Now, that's not how much she needs to save up. Because she's already saved something. What has Haley already kind of saved up for this Nerf gun so far? Um, yeah, Jalen? $15. She's already got $15. You probably do this without the calculator. How much further does she got to go before she's got enough to buy Nerf gun for little bro? Bryson, back to you. $4.65. How many have $4.65? I have questions on that. Look at number nine. And read that for us, if you would, Elaine. Brian realized he didn't have anything he needed to grow hamburgers. Didn't have everything he needed. Oh, didn't have everything he needed to grow hamburgers. So he went to the store to pick up a few items. He bought charcoal, $9, lighter fluid, $6, hamburger buns, $2, and bacon, $7. The general sales tax rate is $9.25, but the grocery tax rate is only 1%. Find his total purchase. All right, do you see this? When there's two different tax rates, class, you got to find two different amounts. You got to first find how much you spent on food, food and then how much you spent on non-food. Non okay, so we're normal items, right? So let's start with the um, let's start with the normal items. Which items are not food on here, Elaine? The charcoal and the lighter fluid. Yeah, we don't eat and drink charcoal and drink lighter fluid. Okay? <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be sad, okay? Unless you're, just, you know, I don't know, one of those, like, flaming sword swallowers. Anyway, we don't do that, right? So how much do you spend on non-food, class? $15. $15. And we multiply the 15 by what tax rate again, Elaine? Um, like, 9.25%. Nine, nine right? So... 0.095. There we go. Okay, so let's do that first, and let's get his non-food tax amount. Go ahead. One dollar and thirty-nine. Buck thirty-nine. How many got the buck thirty-nine for his non-food tax? Now, then there's also food. Well, how much did he spend on food, Jalen? Eight dollars. No, 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 no. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Right. The hamburger buns, two bucks. The bacon, seven bucks. His burgers are better with bacon. That's alliterated too, by the way. Uh, so he spent how much on not? How much did he spend on food, Jalen? You said it was nine dollars, but he doesn't pay nine point two five percent tax or point zero nine two five on food. It's only one percent. One percent. So we just multiply by. You can probably do this in your head. How much is the tax on the food? Nine cents. All right. So what's his total tax that he has to shell out for his uh, purchases here? Anybody? Ben. One forty eight. Do you, did you understand you don't eat charcoal? You know you don't eat charcoal, correct? Yes, that is non-food, Ben. Do you understand you do eat a hamburger bun? Yes. That's food. Do you understand you do eat bacon? Yes. Food. $2 hamburger bun, $7 bacon, $9 worth of food. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, now, the lighter fluid we don't drink, and the charcoal we don't eat. $9 charcoal, looking in your book, $6 lighter fluid. That's $15 on stuff that ain't food. Does that make sense? So we make two separate categories. Every time we go to the store, there's two separate, well, most places, there's two separate categories. There's non-food and food. Non-food, it says it's 9.25% tax, just like the Nerf gun. So this is our tax rate for non-food. But it says it's only 1% on food. Do you see right there? It says grocery tax is only 1%. So that's why the food only gets multiplied by 0.01. Does that make sense now? Yes. And so there's our two separate taxes. But what's the total amount of tax? Well, the non-food tax plus the food tax combines for the total amount of taxes he paid, which was, Griffin? $1.48. dollar 48. 48. Okay, how many got the dollar 48 for the total tax? Okay, now, he spent 15, plus he spent 9, plus he spent taxes. How much did he spend at the store? What was his total purchase? What do we get for that answer, Corey, if you kind of gasp it out to me from back there? That's correct. $25 and 48 cents is correct. How many had that answer? All right, does it make better sense now, Ben? All right, other questions. Are anyone still kind of struggling with the whole two different categories of taxes? All right, let's go to the next one. And uh, we talked about something called the title ad valorem tax. It's a special tax rate you pay on cars. Okay, so when you buy a car, it's a separate tax rate because, let's be honest, we really don't want to be taxed at the same rate we get taxed for other stuff. So, go and read number 10 for us, Jalen. Just like buying a used car, uh, a used Toyota Corolla for his 
list for a let uh oh my goodness. It's it's first day back, right? For a list price of eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. Tax on the car is six point two five percent. And he has to pay an additional fifty three dollars in tag for the tag and title. He has two thousand dollars for a down payment. Find his initial balance on the installment plan. Alright, so if he only has two thousand bucks class, is he able to buy the car? No, no. Not outright. He's gonna have to do count an amortized loan, an installment plan. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we gotta figure out, first of all, how much does the car really cost? Do you understand that? Because the car doesn't cost eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. It has tax as well, doesn't it? He's gotta pay that. He's gotta pay tag and title. So let's start by finding the tax. Okay, how much tax does he pay if the tax rate on a vehicle is 6.25%? Let's start by finding that. And again, that's the key to working with money is just find these things one at a time. You don't look at the problem holistically and panic. You just say, okay, let me find one thing at a time. I don't know what the tax is. Let me find how much the tax is. 0 0.0625 times the 18,500. Bryson's already got it. How many also got one thousand one hundred fifty-six dollars twenty-five cents? Point zero sixty-five times eighteen thousand five hundred. He pays tax. He also pays the tag and title, which is like the license plate for the car. You got to pay for that. And uh, how much was tag and title on the car? Fifty-three. So he has to pay that also, doesn't he? And of course, he has to buy the car. The car was eighteen thousand five hundred. So you see, he doesn't just buy a car. He pays taxes, he buys a license plate for it, gets it registered with the government, all right? So how much does he really have to pay for the car, tax, tag, title, all of it together, Ben? $19,709.25. How many got the same thing, Ben? $19,709.25. All right, any questions on how we got there? And he doesn't have that much money. But you know what he does have? 2000 He's got two grand. So take away the two grand that he's already paid. How much does he have left to still have to pay? Because does everyone understand? Whatever he still owes, whatever is still left over, that's what he has to amortize. Do we all got that? Mm -hmm. So when it says for the initial balance on his installment plan, that's how much he starts out owing the credit union, bank, whatever, wherever he borrows the money from. How much does he start out owing, Kirsten? 17, 17, 17,000. 17, yeah, $17,709.25. Good. How many got this answer then for number 10? $17,709.25. That's what he starts out. Now, let's go to number 11 because this builds on this. Number 11, read that for us now if you would. Luciana, nice and loud. Person's bank will finance a dollar service purchase from number, from number 10 by offering 10 and amortized loan. 72 monthly payments of $258.26 each. Find how much this will end up paying over the next six years. All right, so 72 months. Does everyone, first of all, understand that 72 months is six years? We all good with that, right? Okay, so for six years, he's going to pay for this car. Every month, he pays the bank how much, Luciana? $258.26. And he pays the bank that amount of money how many different times? Um, 72. 72 times. So what do we have to do, class? Times that. Just multiply them. Just type it into your calculator real quick. That's an easy problem to type in. How much does he pay the bank? Again, it takes six years to do this, but eventually, over six years, he ends up paying the bank how much? Joel? $18,594.72. All right. So everyone got that answer. Any questions how we got that? Now, how much did he actually owe the bank class? $17,000. 17,709.25. But he pays the bank 18,594.72. Does everyone see that? So there's more that he paid than he should have owed. That's called finance charge or interest, right? And so number 12 says, how much interest did Dustin have to pay the bank? Well, just subtract how much he actually paid them minus how much he owed in the first place. 
and the difference is the interest. Does that make sense? Like if, if I borrow $5 from Ben and he wants me to pay him $7 back, well, the $2 is the interest, right? Same thing with the bank, it's just a lot bigger numbers. How much interest is there here, Bryson? $885.47 is the total interest he ends up paying. Questions on that? By the way, that'd be about a 5% interest rate, which right now is about right for a car. Questions on this problem? Kind of see how it builds through. All right, let's drop down to number 13. And uh, let's go to a budget topic here. And read number 13 for us, if you would, Kirsten. Mrs. Mary Weather earns $1,850 each month, but has $363.53 withheld for taxes, federal income tax, and FI FICA tax. Fine. We'll talk about that more in the next couple lessons. Find her disposable income. Now, disposable income class is another name for <laughs> net, pay. net pay. Disposable income means her net pay. Her gross pay is what she earns. That's 1850 But the giver mint takes 363.53 out every month. So what's her disposable income? Well, what do we have to do, class? Subtract. Subtract, right? The 363.53 is stuff she doesn't get to have, so subtract it away. Stay with me there, man. Doing good, doing good. Keep it up. Stay with me there. What is her disposable income, Jalen? $1,486.47. How many have that same answer? All right, all we have to do is subtract what the government takes from what she made, and that's how much she gets to keep. That's her disposable income. Now, look at number 14. It says, well, actually, you read this for us if you would. Um, let's see, who hasn't read yet today? Ben has not. You just read. Don't give me that. Ben, <laughs> number 14. If Miss Mary Weather puts $100 into her savings account each month, what percent of her disposable income does she save? All right. Now, class. How much disposable income does she have total? $1,486.47. What part of her income does she put into savings class? $100. 100 bucks. Okay? And I asked you what percent is that? To find a percent, we always divide the part by the whole. So when we divide this, we divide what by what class? 100 by... There we go. Divide that out. And uh, let's get this to nearest tenth of a percent. Let's round our answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. Remember, percent is already how many decimal places, class? Two. Two. So a tenth of a percent would be a third decimal place. Does that make sense? What percent does she put into savings, Ben? Fifteen percent. Ooh. Here. Oh, other way around, remember. Divide the part, 100, <coughs> divided by the whole. Whenever you find a percent, divide the part by the whole. This is the whole amount she gets to keep every month. This is the part she puts in savings. So divide it the other direction. And it should give us a really little decimal here, Ben. What is the decimal? Go ahead and read it to me once you've got it. And it just keeps going, I'm guessing? All right, now, tenth of a percent, class. To make it a percent, we have to go one point. point. So that's going to be six point, and we're either going to keep a seven or we're going to bump it up to an eight. Class, what do we do? Keep it a seven. Keep it a seven. The two isn't big enough. How many at 6.7 percent goes into savings? Which is a little over what they recommend. They recommend five percent or more. She's putting a little bit more than that into savings every month. She's doing pretty good. Questions on that? We at number 15. And uh, read number 15 for us. Okay, Kirsten. If Mrs. Merriweather budgets 15% of her net pay for recreation. Recreation, that just means having fun. How much can she spend each month on recreation? 
And we'll round this to the nearest dollar. Okay, 15% of the net pay. What does of mean, class? Multiply. So literally, all I have to do is multiply by? 0.15. Multiply what by 0.15? $1,486.37. Her net pay, her disposable income. So multiply that by 0.15. How much does Mrs. Now, presumably, by the way, Mrs. Merriweather is married to a Mr. Merriweather because normally you would not spend 15% of your income on recreation. But if your husband's pay is taking care of a lot of the bills, well, now then we have a larger portion of your pay uh, to uh, put toward recreation. But if you were a sole earner, you would not want to budget that percentage on recreation. Uh, how much, if we round the nearest whole dollar, does go toward recreation there, Joel? $222.97. And let's round to the nearest whole dollar, I said, so... $223. There we go, $223 about is what she spends each month on recreation. Questions on that? Questions on budgets, questions on sales tax, questions on how an amortized loan works with making those equal monthly payments, questions on all that stuff. All right, clear desk, except for a clean sheet of paper and your calculator and a pencil. Clean sheet of paper, pencil, calculator. Everything else away. Clean sheet of paper, pencil, calculator. Everything else off your desk. We're going to take quiz C for those watching on YouTube. Quiz C. Kirsten, do your best. I know you were out for a lot of it. If you do poorly, I'm not going to count this. Bryson, you were also out Friday, so yours won't have to count. Uh, but do your best with it. Gives me at least an opportunity to see how well you know it, and also gives you a chance to see the kind of stuff to be prepared for on a test coming up, I think, next week or just after. So. That's clear, just hold on to it for now. Except for blank sheet of paper, quickly bet, quickly. Sheet of paper, pencil, calculator. All right, when you get your quiz, put your first last name in the name spot. I'll take it back to Jalen. First last name in the name spot. Today's date, don't stab yourself. In the date spot. First last name in the name spot. Today's date, 220-24 in the date spot. By the way, for those watching on YouTube, after we get started on the quiz, I'm going to uh, write the assignment on the chalkboard, and then we'll end the video there. We are done with our lesson with this quiz. First last name, 220-24, today's date. Numbers 1 through 5, pretty straightforward. Just some quick terminology review. Make sure you know those terms. Uh, by the way, number 1, there's a few different things you could put in the blank. You don't have to put all of them. Just put one of them, okay? As long as it's a term I've taught or referred to, we're going to be good to go with that. Uh, number six, seven, eight. Some different problems. They're all standalone problems. Um, notice on seven, before you get the final answer, I want there to be a little answer in that blank. Okay. Same for number eight. There's a little number that needs to go in the blank first, and then you'll actually get the final answer. Read the question carefully. Maybe read it through twice. Make sure you understand what it's asking. On the back side, we do have two problems on the back as well. Number nine is very similar to the homework problem. Okay, where there's food and then there's non-food, except I already kind of gave you some totals there. So again, you answer the questions in the blanks, and then the final answer will go in the answer blank. And then there's number 10. I gave you some individual costs there for you to figure there. Again, you'll use the calculator, but if I've given you a blank, make sure we write those answers in also. Use your blank page as a cover sheet. You may begin.